Of all the boats that we talk about around here, there's really one sort of genre that I get asked about the most. These are the boats that we've all owned at one time or another, and honestly, some of us likely own right now. These are boats that we usually get as our second boat or our third boat, and sometimes we end up keeping them forever. So without further ado, and by popular demand, these are my thoughts, not yours. This week on everything you need to know, we're talking about Captain Daddy's Top 5 30 Footers. Thirty footers are tricky because there's so many awesome boats to really look at, so I had to narrow it down a little bit. So first, it has to be affordable. Nobody wants to drop a hundred grand on one of these things. Let's say it can be had for less than fifty grand, maybe even less than thirty. Which boat you get is actually going to have more to do, however, with what you intend to do with it. Are you lake sailing? Are you going to do the Great Loop? Or are you island hopping down south? I think a thirty footer is ideal for weekending and the occasional week-long trip, as opposed to, say, living aboard. So that's what I'm going to be looking for, a solid weekender. And that all means I'm not looking at the full-keel world travelers, the island packets, and the west sails. They don't make this list for me because if I'm going to get one of those, I want the bigger version of them for cruising. I'm looking more toward the fin-keeled, easier-to-live-with boats. Also, to point out my top five list, is in order of my least favorite to my most favorite. But if it made the list, that's top five. That's awesome. So let's go. Number five, the Tartan 30. Some people hate on Tartan a little bit, but I love this little cruiser. It's one of their most popular boats they ever made. Coming in at nearly 9,000 pounds, it's got the punch to deal with anything a lake sailor should ever encounter or ever have to deal with. You also get a skeg hung rudder. So if you're doing the great loop and you want to be mowing down trees as you go up the river, you're okay. You're not going to snap your rudder off. The cabin comes in a few layouts as it changed over the years, but they all look very livable. And of course, it was penned by my favorite design duo, Sparkman and Stevens. It just had to make this list. Also, you can get it in a tall rig, which added a monumental three feet at the top of the mast. So its light wind performance is going to be awesome. You may not love Tartan, but it's hard to argue with this little boat. It would be very comfortable as a weekender, if you can find it, it even came with an aft cabin option. And of course, as any 30 footer should, it had a private head with shower up front of reasonable size. The biggest selling point for me was speed, however, with this boat. The Tartan dominated the 30 foot class in the 70s when it was designed. So you know it's not going to be a slouch. And I kind of like that. Number four, and you're going to hate me because I'm already deviating from the rules that I set. But I think you just have to for this boat. How could we talk about 30 footers without talking about the legendary Catalina 27? They made 6,662 of these things, so it's fairly like you, likely you know which boat I'm talking about. These are not a boat that I would buy for the luxury or the build quality of it all. They're not a boat I'm looking for because the interior is so spacious, though it is pretty livable for a weekender. This is a boat I'm looking at because it's just plain fun. I've never been on anything that sails quite like a Catalina 27. These are like little rocket ships in the right wind. They love to point way up high with the rail down. They race very nicely. And again, you could get a tall rig if you like that sort of thing. They built so many of these things that for so long that you could get them in just about any configuration you want. You want your boat to have an outboard? No problem. They came with those. Prefer an atomic four gas inboard? Again, no problem. They did that. Or how about a little double thumper diesel? Yep, they did that too. The point of this boat for me is just to go fast. The PHRF rating starts at 204, and the hull speed is six and a quarter knots, so that's really good for a 27-foot boat, honestly. The most avid racer in my club that I race in had a Catalina 27 for years and years and loved it. He ended up jumping from that to a Legend 37, and I think that says everything that I need to know about the Catalina 27. Number three, and this one is actually a 30-footer, but you might not love where I'm going with it. The Hunter 30-2. I know, I know, but it's a Hunter. Bear with me for a second. This boat is all about quality of life. It won't be the fastest thing out there on race day, but it still does sail fairly well. Where this boat really shines, though, is in comfort. It's coming in at 10,500 pounds, so she's a sturdy girl, 
and while they only made them from 88 to 92, it was a very forward-thinking boat. You get a fractional rig, which is basically standard now. You get a shallower keel, but with the wings at the bottom, which again, basically comes standard on everything now. You also get big boat aspirations in a smaller boat. Things like an aft cabin, a larger head with a shower. You get a diesel and a massive water tank for the size of the boat. You can really tell that Hunter was taking aim squarely at the weekender class of boats here, and honestly, I think they did a great job. My last note on the Hunter, and this is super rare for the era, and also super forward thinking for the era, you get a walkthrough transom. Now the purists will want to slap me, but I just love a walkthrough transom. I'm just tired of climbing over stern rails all the time. Maybe I'm getting old. Number two, maybe I'll win back some purists here. We have to talk about the mighty Pearson 30. How could you talk about 30 footers without mentioning the Pearson 30? It's kind of a lightweight, 8,300 pounds, but it is fast and very, very capable. It really goes to say something about a boat when the man who designed it, in this case, Bill Shaw, buys one for himself right out of production and he owned and sailed it for years. So that's standing behind your work. There is something interesting about the hull on the Pearson 30. Um, it's sort of designed after a sailing dinghy. Um, aft of the keel, it comes to a deeper V, which made the boat much easier to balance out when it was heeled over at speed, which makes it a lot of fun to sail the thing upwind. The downside of the Pearson is what it is in any design from that era. A narrow beam makes the interior a little less livable than, say, the Hunter. But, of course, it is what it is. If you want to go fast, compromises must be made. We have a Pearson 30 where I race, and I can say with the right captain and crew, she has been known to absolutely trounce our entire fleet from time to time. I think she took third overall last year. For an older boat, when they're sailed well, they sail very, very well. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons. People give a couple of bucks an episode to make this whole channel possible. Um, a big shout out to this week's newest patron, Daryl. Welcome to the team and thank you. Before we hit the number one boat on my list, I think an honorable mention needs to be given to the granddaddy of them all. The watch me sail around the world twice by myself, lose the mast off Cape Horn only to fix it and keep on with the circumnavigation because I am that much of a badass. Yves Galina special, the Alberg 30. I cannot sing enough praises to this design and how truly proven it is on a global scale. I, however, did not add it to this list because I just don't really want one. It made a lot of sense when people were circumnavigating on 30-foot boats. It was probably king of them all. But as we know, 40 feet is sort of the new 30. With what is available today, the Albert 30 just doesn't do it for me anymore. But I still think it is one of the most beautiful boats ever made. If we ever do a top five on those, I think she might win. Number one, if you noticed, this list has been sort of pivoting between fast boats and comfortable boats and back to fast boats. And there's a reason for that. That's what I want in a 30 foot boat. I want speed, but I also want comfort. And not many boats actually manage to tick both of those boxes, not in a 30 footer anyway. I can think of lots of 40 foot boats that are fast and comfortable, but a 30, I think that's a lot more difficult. So there is one However, that if I was going to buy a 30-footer, this is actually the one I would probably buy. And it's the Beneteau First 310. Now, before you get mad at the name, this ain't your granddaddy's Beneteau. The first series is Benny's strictly go-fast line of boats. They don't look like your typical Benny. They look like race boats with swept-back coach tops and pointy windows. And the eagle-eyed viewer will, of course, point out that the 310 is not actually a 30-foot boat. It's a 31. I know. I was originally going to go with the first 30, um, because it is a 30, but they're just so old and dated now that I couldn't bring myself to do it. The 310 is sort of the newer version, and every bit is good. Now on this list, the 310 comes in as the racier lightweight, at just cracking 7,000 pounds. The 310 sports a 6-foot, point as high as I damn well please, high aspect ratio keel, spade rudder, uh, it's got forward thinking. It's got the fractional rig. It also comes with a tall rig, and we do like those around here. But don't think she's all go and no show. You get the speed and performance of the first series, but you also get a lot of the Beneteau-ness of it all. 
a more modern interior with room to entertain people, and it would be a very livable boat to weekend on or take it away for a week or two. You get a nicely appointed galley, a huge aft cabin with a nice head with shower, a roomy V-berth for the kids. Being inside the first series of boats, it's just a nice place to be. It's hard to explain, but they give everything a nice little touch. The sink is fancier. The cushions are a bit better than usual. The winches are higher end. The rigging is a little more robust. Access ports and hatches are more plentiful and more well-placed. The wiring is cleaner. It came with more options from the factory. It's luxury without being obnoxious. It's speed without being uncomfortable and soaking wet the whole time. It's enough room without being too much. The 310 just works for me because it gives me both of the things I want from a 30-footer, and that is really hard to find. What's your favorite 30-footer? Did I miss talking about your boat? Want to see an everything you need to know on something specific? Leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps with the witchcraft on YouTube. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you next time. Perfect. One more time. This week on everything you need to know, we're talking about Captain Daddy's top five 30-footers. Perfect. One more time. Okay.